So people, welcome to A Thousand Words. My name is Radu, I'm a street photographer, and today I'm talking to you about this camera right here, which for many, many reasons could very well be my favorite camera, my desert island camera. But for one big reason, it is not. Let me tell you about it. Having Pilsner Oracle again. Cheers, fellas. Ah. The fresh, soft bitterness of this beer, this almost sweet, hoppy taste is just fantastic. Really, really love this Pilsner Oracle. Great Czech beer. And I really, really love this camera. I should mention that this video is sponsored by Paul, a dear friend of mine and subscriber to the channel. Uh, thanks to his seemingly unending generosity, I've been able to test quite a few pieces of gear lately, mainly camera and cameras and lenses, most of which I either would not have been able to purchase myself because they're rather expensive or rare or both. Uh, some of them I wasn't as interested in them as uh, necessary for me to actually uh, decide to spend the money on them, but uh, seeing how they were freely available. Again, thanks to his generosity, I was able to try them out. This PenF was loaned to me by Paul on two different occasions for long term, basically for as long as I need to. I've had this camera for a few weeks, a few months back. I've had this camera for what seems like more than a month now. I'm at the point where I'm ready to share a few opinions on it. This is not intended to be a review in any way, shape or form, far from it. I will not go into the technical details of it. This is about almost 10 years old now. It's launched in 2016. So uh, if you want to learn about the specs of it, there's plenty of other places to go for that. I will just uh, talk about it from a very personal and subjective point of view, because on the one hand, I have talked about this camera recently on my channel in members only videos, but since um, the vast majority of you have not seen them, I wanted to make a video where I, I kind of share my final impressions with the camera because I have been on the proverbial fence with this camera for quite some time now. I have also talked about uh, quite often recently how um, I'm a bit dissatisfied with the Sony and uh, not for the image quality. Actually, that's the thing I love most about it, but rather how I find it a bit uh, uninspiring and somewhat bland and big and heavy. And sure enough, just have a look at these guys here. Focus, focus. This is half as big, half as light. Sure, this has a 100 millimeter lens on it, but even without it, this is half as big, is half as heavy. And uh, let's not even get into the 
pizzazz of it. More on that later. I was, for the what seems like the longest time, looking for the perfect camera, looking for a camera that really sparks my inner fire. Because I am of two minds when uh, choosing cameras. On the one hand, I'm definitely and without a doubt looking for a really, really great image-making machine. The best that I can afford. I'm, well, I'm not looking for pristine, clinical, perfectly sharp, edge-to-edge, -edge, apochromatic perfection. I am looking of a certain kind, of very subjective and personal kind of image quality that uh, I almost find non-negotiable. So there's that. I I'm really, really a sucker for image quality. More on that later. On the other hand, since I mentioned I'm of two minds, I really want my camera to be something I enjoy holding, I enjoy looking at. The latter is something that I sort of found lackluster with the Sony until very recently. More on that later. So then, in my search for a perfect camera, this uh, has uh, piqued my interest quite, quite a lot. Not the least for its impeccable design language. I think this is, and I'm going on record saying this, this is by far, by far, without a doubt in my mind, this is the prettiest, handsomest, most elegant, most refined, the sexiest camera I have ever seen. Handling-wise, it's also fantastic. Now, a lot of people complain about this knob here, the art color, this button right here. Some people complain about it because it rubs against the middle finger and supposedly it makes it hurt. Now, I won't go as far as to claim Snowflake, but I think, quite the contrary, this serves as a finger rest. I find it very, very pleasant in hand. This thumb rest here is practically just great. Everything about this camera, save for one thing, more on that later, is fantastic. The knobs turn excellently. They have really precise, confident, tactile, response the buttons are great even the viewfinder if somewhat small certainly a lesser viewfinder compared to the a7r3 here i think it's more than serviceable the aspect of it is something that leaves me breathless every time every time i grab this every time i put it in my hand there's simply a feeling that almost kind of makes me feel like I'm in love. And I, I'm trying not to use hyperboles here. Hyperbole, A-E, plural. Yeah, I'm trying to keep a level head, but I assure you most of these, if not all, are not exaggerations. I really feel like this camera makes my photographer heart jump up with joy. There, there's, there's something that, about this camera that not even Fuji, not even Fuji, I'll go on record again and say this is much, much prettier than a Fuji. Any Fuji, all Fujis. And I've loved Fuji for quite some time until they disappointed me with their finicky, lackluster quality control issues that make buttons stop working. Back to the Pen F. I love this camera. It's a joy to use. It's small and light. It's beautiful. Coupled with the 17 mm f1.8 here makes for a killer X100 replacement. I've taken this camera with me on um, day trips with the girls. I mean, my daughter and my wife. I've taken this camera to the countryside visiting my mom doing some work and snapping pictures on the side. I've uh, shot a lot with it at home. 
photographing my baby girl. I've done street photography with this camera. I've practically taken it, taken it through the paces, almost as if it were my own. And thanks to Paul again, because uh, I was allowed such a long-term loan, but um, it, it, it has allowed me to develop a very strong opinion on this camera. And uh, while I often considered replacing my, my full-frame A7R 3 with this, a micro four-third sensor, half the resolution, this is 20 megapixels, that's 42, with inferior autofocus, with inferior EVF, with inferior display with inferior dynamic range but everything in the name of connection to the camera because I feel a certain a certain closeness to it more so than I do with a Sony more on that later because things are beginning to look up as far as my relationship with the Sony now A few things to balance the positives, a few negatives. While the viewfinder is certainly okay and serviceable, it's rather small. I'm not sure what the magnification is, go look it up. I'm not going to offer any specifications here. It's not the point of the video. But the viewfinder, while well, small, it's certainly serviceable. However, I'm not much for frame rate. I don't even set my A7R 3 to the maximum viewfinder frame rate, but I am for clarity, magnification, and resolution. And this suffers in all three aspects. It also suffers in terms of color accuracy. I shoot monochrome a lot. I basically always have all my cameras set to display images and the live view in black and white. So that's important to me. And this has a very, very strong, decided red tint to the image. Both the viewfinder and certainly the screen here is, it's not pure monochrome. It's not a neutral black and white image. It's, it's something that kind of puts me off a little. Moving on, while I'm very much a manual lens guy, very much a vintage lens kind of guy, more on that later because it, it, it weighs importantly in my decision, in my final decision, which I'll get to towards the end of this video. If I were to use this, I find vintage lenses make practically no sense at all. Sure, there are adapters, sure, you can use them, but there are two main things that take away all the fun and all the sense out of it. First being the fact that this being a micro four third sensor will severely alter the resulting field of view of any vintage lens you put on it. Uh, the crop factor is two, and it will basically double the resulting field of view of any lens you put on it. It will also basically crop inside the image circle of any lens, and that is to say any and all character those vintage lenses I might use have will be thrown out the window because you can say bye-bye to any accuracy and any true proper vanilla character. Since the Micro Four Third sensor actually sees a, a cropped part of the image circle, there's no corner character to speak of. Anything you see with a vintage lens will be basically altered by the crop factor. So while I use uh, vintage lenses for their character, that's what interests me at the end of the day, not sharpness, not uh, pure image quality, but rather their personality and character, that would be completely lost. The only remaining option, if I were to use this, would be native mount lenses, be them first party or third party. Sure enough, I know there are plenty of manual focus 
alternatives for a micro four thirds using native mount, using the native mount, and sure enough, that, that, that would be all right. So if I were to use native autofocus lenses with this, I think I would be poorly served by the fact that this hasn't got the best of autofocus. Well, serviceable, it's suffering greatly for the lack of a joystick. Sure enough, you can use the front and rear dials here to move your desired focus point, and that's working decently enough. It's certainly nowhere near the efficiency of having a joystick. Also the fact that it kind of tends to pulse and hunt a lot is kind of mm, less than ideal. Even that is something I would be able and prepared to hide under the rug, let's say. All in the name of looks, experience, handling, and pizzazz, let's call it. Which brings me to the main reason why I eventually decided I can't use this for any serious stuff. I could not have this as my main camera. Sure, if um, my financial situation would be otherwise and I had uh, money lying around just waiting to be spent on whims, because sure enough, this is just a whim, it's not a necessity, I would probably own this body for those rare occasions when I want to feel like a hipster and go out with a very beautiful body. But for all other intents and purposes, seeing how I also find value in having a single main camera, this is not going to cut it for me for the reason of the Micro Four Thirds sensor. And this is not even the fault of this particular camera, it's the fault of the entire system. Now, I won't be that guy that tells you you can't do professional work with the Micro Four Thirds sensors. I won't either be that guy that tells you that they suffer a lot in low light. Because personally, I don't mind noise. I don't mind grain at all. I can shoot this at maximum ISO and I won't blink twice. I don't mind noise as much as I mind the fact that the Micro Four Thirds sensor looks a lot like a very good smartphone camera. Yeah, that's, that's how I like to put it, because I have recently come to the realization that it's uh, APS-C and up where images start to look good. And full frame is where it's at. The bigger the sensor, the more I find that images look elegant and natural and soft, not as opposed to sharp, but as far as sophisticated and refined. And the Micro Four Thirds sensor simply looks flat, looks really digital, looks a lot more sharp than I would like. And sure enough, you can tone the sharpness down either in post or directly in camera. But what you can't tone down is the flat digital look, the lack of 3D pop, and while Sure enough, this is something that's more to do with glass element count inside a lens. I think the sensor plays quite an important role here because there's certainly a lack of depth. There's a much more apparent perception of depth and separation in a full frame sensor compared to a micro four thirds sensor. So, thing is like this. Every time I grab this camera, I feel a little jolt of happiness. I feel good. It makes me feel good. It makes me want to grab it and go shoot and take pictures, be it inside the house with my family, be it outside doing street photography, anywhere and everywhere in between. However, the fun stops when I get home because I like the handling even with the lack of the joystick, even with the lackluster autofocus, I am actually very, very fond of the entire experience. I enjoy shooting the camera, I enjoy holding it. It's small and light and pretty, and I will 
keep going on and on about these things for as long as I damn well please because these are things that are important to me and dear to my heart. But going back to the being of two minds point I made earlier, I really care for image quality. And while the image quality I care for is not that clinical, apochromatic perfection with no flaws and defects whatsoever, there is a kind of sensibility I'm after. There is a kind of look I'm after. And uh, that look is achieved best and practically only with a full frame and vintage lenses. The fun stops when I bring this home and put the card into my computer and download the images. That's where the fun stops. That's where I feel disappointed. That's where I find the value of a full frame camera because it's not once that that I went out with a camera, had a great jolly old time, only to get back to the laptop, look at the images and be let down by them. Again, it's not the grain I mind, it's not the poorer, which is not all that much poorer, dynamic range ability of the camera, it's the flatness, it's the digital look, it's the fact that images out of this come out looking sharp and not the good kind of sharp. They come out looking harsh, unrefined, rough around the edges and basically the contrary of what I want my images to look like. That's part of the reason why I don't use modern contemporary lenses on my Sony. It's part of the reason why I like to use imperfect 60-year-old lenses on a top of the line in 2018, I think, full frame, mirrorless, high resolution body. And for that reason, I have decided that unfortunately, I could not main this. Sure, this is great as a, not even a B cam, a C cam, something you take out on a whim when you feel like you wanna be all hipster-like. And I'm not even going to get into the fact that this kind of flippy screen bugs me for photography, but at the same time, I find value in turning it inwards and not having any screen here and hiding images. Well, I don't uh, tend to chimp all that much, if at all, lately. Uh, I find value in being able to turn the screen inwards. But I think I've made my point. This is a great camera, but as far as I'm concerned, it's severely let down by the sensor. I wouldn't even mind the poor autofocus. I wouldn't even mind the poor battery performance. I wouldn't even mind the poor, poor-ish viewfinder and screen. I wouldn't mind anything, even the lenses, even the fact that this is practically poorly served by the F1.2s because the moment you put a big old F1.2 lens on it, this is just the ergonomics and the handling of this just goes out the window. This is great with small pancake type lenses like this one. And sure enough, there are a few of those and I could use them were it not for the micro four thirds sensor. I think I'm gonna wrap this up here. Uh, thanking Paul, thank you Paul again for allowing me to test this for as long as I want basically. I'm going to be returning it to you soon-ish. I will tease the fact that I want to do another video about the A7R 3 because in my last video where I talked about my relationship with the Sony, I basically I uh, was a bit negative and things have improved a lot lately. I have uh, started enjoying the camera, the Sony A7R 3 a lot more lately, a lot more, but I'll talk about this in a future video. This is about the Pen F, the camera that could very well have been my perfect camera, but sadly it isn't. In conclusion, wrapping things up, I want to remind you I still have prints for sale. They're gonna be prancing around the screen right now for you to see. Get in touch with me if you want to buy any. 
I have a Discord server, link is in the description. Get in and let's start talking about photography. I will leave you with a few images taken with this camera. And uh, until next time, I have been Radu. This has been a thousand words. These have been my opinions and conclusions after using this for quite a lot. Quite a lot, even if on and off. Until next time, farewell.